Hey, shalom, everybody. Come on in. There we go. I got you now. Come on in, everybody. This Tuesday afternoon, it is time to command your day. A little therapy, a little prayer, a little prophecy, a little teaching. Today is Therapy Tuesday. This is going to be good for you on every platform. Let me get you to share whatever platform you're on. And when you share, type share it in the comments so that I know that you have shared. Uh, guys, we are 12 decisions away of people becoming Christians or recommitting themselves to the Lord. So to God be the glory for that. That is amazing. Uh, so let me get you to share. Uh, and uh, we're going to see some lives change and transform today. And Therapy Tuesday is going to be, uh, it's always good. It's going to be, I just think, really exceptionally uh, good um, today because this is something that we all deal with. I realize it's the middle of your day, but the reason, Theo, but I realize that the reason I want to come to you in the middle of your day is to help you because sometimes it's the middle of the day that can become the challenge uh, for the day. How many of you already today, you ran into a few challenges today? Just wave at me. If that's not you, that's not you. Don't wave at me. But if that's you, you've already ran into some challenges today. And I want to help you uh, navigate through those challenges and recognize that God is going to use those challenges for your good. Let me, everybody, shalom to you. Speak to me as you come in. Let me know where you're watching from and share. I realize because this is an earlier pop-up, most people will watch on the replay, and uh, that's awesome. Um, and uh, But I wanted to just come a little early to, to help you in the middle of the day. And then for those of you that get right through the end of the day, um, when you get off work or whatever and you're watching this, I wanted to speak life into you. Atlanta, good to see you. Orlando, South Africa, good afternoon to you. Shalom, everybody. Chattanooga, welcome. Everybody on every platform, let me get you to share. When you share, people get saved, lives are changed, lives are transformed. So listen, let me remind you um, that uh, we're getting ready to enter into the biblical spring feast. The Bible has seven major spring feasts, drop or feasts rather, drop a seven in the comments. Seven is the biblical number of completion or shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking all is well. So when we honor the feast, we welcome Shalom. Can I get somebody on TikTok, somebody on IG to type text harvest to 55498, text harvest to 55498. And then that way I can pin it because the app is the best way to stay connected to all things Bishop Form and all things Harvest Church. Hello, Chef in Panama City. Good to see you. All right. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate you. And we know we'll have to keep putting this in here a couple of times since it's only going to leave it up now. 60 seconds. All right. So seven major feasts. There are four in the spring. There are three in the fall. The spring feasts represent this, sudden fast forward movement. And I want you to hear me clearly. Your life is about to enter within the next six days, sudden fast forward movement. If you agree with that, just drop a fire in the comments. Now, you may say, well, Bishop, I don't feel it. You don't have to feel it. In fact, that's what we're going to talk about for just a few moments today. We're going to talk about uh, this process that God used uh, to get his people into uh, into the spring feast. See, the origin of these spring feasts come from the book of Exodus. Drop the word Exodus in the comments. And for those of you unfamiliar with the story of Exodus, Exodus is when God's people, after 430 years, they are brought out of Egyptian bondage. This is what the Bible says, to the very day that God prophesied that thing, to the very day. And then God prophesied that thing. Why is this important to understand? Because there's not one word that God has spoken of over your life that is not going to come to pass. I'm going to speak that into your life today. And everything God says about you, it is going to come to pass. And sometimes what can get frustrated, and this is what we're going to focus on on Therapy Tuesday today, is the disappointments along the way. I wish I could tell you that on your way to every promise, every word that God's spoken in his word about you, I wish I could tell you, that those things are going to happen without incident, without mess, without junk, without drama, without disappointment. I could tell you that, but that would be a lie. The reality is, is that your journey to deliverance is going to be filled with disappointment. Your journey to destiny moments is going to be filled with disappointment. Disappointment comes with it. It's part of the package. It's like if you go to a fast food restaurant and you get the number one, that number one, look at me, is coming with that sandwich, it's coming with those fries, and it's coming with that drink. Must me, it comes with the package. It comes with the package. So uh, you need to know how to heal from that so that you don't let disappointment stop you. You don't let disappointment block you. You don't let disappointment make you think that something is wrong. You don't let disappointment frustrate you or aggravate you or get you stuck or stagnant. you got to hear me. You got to hear that. Um, you cannot let disappointment stop you. So when you look at this, listen very carefully. Uh, when you look at this, when you look at this, um, I began in prayer last night, taking you through the journey 
that they had to go through in order to get to the place of Passover. What happened? On four, at the end of 430 years, on that night, on that night, the Bible says um, that the Lord brought them out. Now, it happened overnight. Listen to me. It happened overnight, which means when we step into the spring feast, this is where you want to get used to words like suddenly. Put that in the comments. Immediately. All of a sudden, the spring feasts represent that type of movement in your life. And here's what's powerful about it is the feasts are God's times that he sets up for us. See, when we pray praise and worship, we create an audience with God. But during the feast, God says, I want a meeting. I want an audience with you, which means these things are built in. It, 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 it's built in. It's, it's God's calendar. It's automatic. Come on. Uh, uh, and, it, watch me, and it's electric. Woogie, woogie, woogie. Okay. It's automatic. It goes with the timetable that we're in. Overnight, April. Um, that's what the scripture says in Exodus, that overnight in Exodus 12, they came out after 10 no's, 10 disappointments, 10 failures, 10 mistakes, 10 why me's. And this is what I wanted to focus on in today's, in today's um, Therapy Tuesday. See, the word therapy means to heal. Um, and God is our healer. Exodus 15, 26 makes it clear that God is our healer. Now, he may use a variety of things to heal us, but he is our healer. Put that in the comments. He's my healer. And Moses had to learn how to heal from disappointment in order to keep it moving because he literally goes to Pharaoh. And I want, I want to read you what the Bible says. And I'm going to read, uh, we're going to go from New Living Translation today. Um, in Exodus chapter five, this is when God is telling him, I want you to go and I want you uh, to uh, tell my people, or tell Pharaoh, who's the king of Egypt, to let my people go. I want you to listen um, to what the Lord says. So in Exodus chapter six, we see this. Um, the same day, so this is after Pharaoh, actually, let me just read the whole story. After the presentation of Israel leaders, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. They told him, this is what the Lord God of Israel says, let my people go, and then you may hold a feast or a festival to honor me in the wilderness. Is that so? retorted Pharaoh. And who is the Lord? And why should I listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know your God, and I'm not going to let Israel go. Everybody look at me. Now, the Bible says that the heart of kings is in the hand of the Lord, which means there's nobody that God cannot turn in order to favor us, which means anytime God does not cause them to favor us, that's because in their, in their stubbornness, that's where our favor is. I'm going to back it up and say it again. Anything that hasn't turned for your good or hasn't turned in your favor, it's because the favor is in their stubbornness. There's something there God needs you to see. There's something there God needs you to take out of that situation. Can I just get you to open your mouth and pray to say, Lord, show me what I'm missing. Lord, show me what I'm missing. Lord, show me what I'm missing. Because God could have made faith will turn his heart at that moment and say, fine, you can go. But he didn't. And I want to talk to some people today where there's some things that God could have done, but he didn't. Since he didn't do it, that must mean it's going to be for his glory and for your good. If I'm already speaking life into your life, eight minutes into this Therapy Tuesday pop-up, drop a fire in the comments. He could have made Pharaoh do it on the first ask, but he didn't. In fact, listen to the rest of the story. Let's go. Verse three, but Aaron and Moses persisted. The God of the Hebrews has met with us, they declared. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness. We can offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. If we don't, he'll kill us with a plague and with a sword. Pharaoh replied, Moses and Aaron, why are you distracting the people from the desk? Get back to work. Look, there are many people in your land and you're stopping them from their work. The same day, Pharaoh sent this order to the Egyptian slave drivers and the Israelite foremen. Do not supply any more straw for making bricks. Make the people get it themselves, but still require them to make the same number of bricks before. Don't recruit the coda. They are lazy. That's why they're crying out, let us go and offer sacrifices to our God. Let them down with more work. Make them sweat. This will teach them to listen to lies. So the slave drivers went uh, to the people and said, you're going to make bricks with no straw. Find it where you can, but you have to produce as many as you can. So they were the people scattered throughout the land of Egypt in search of stubble to use it as straw. Verse 13, meanwhile, um, the Egyptian slave drivers continued to push hard. Meet your daily coat of bricks, just as you did when we provided with you with straw, they demanded. They whipped the Israelite foremen 
Then they whipped the Israelite foreman that they had put in charge of the work crews. Why haven't you met your quotas yesterday or today, they demanded. So they went to Pharaoh and pleaded with him. Pharaoh, I'm going to skip through some verses. Pharaoh says, you're lazy, you're lazy, you're lazy. I want you to listen to this. Verse, uh, verse 21. The foreman, these are the Israelite foremen. They said to Moses, may the Lord God judge you and punish you for making us stink before Pharaoh and his officials. You have put a sword in their hands, an excuse to kill us all. Then Moses went back to the Lord and pro protested, why have you brought all this trouble on your own people? Lord? Listen, listen, listen. Why did you send me? In other words, God, I did exactly what you asked me to do. And I, this thing did not go the way. I was expecting for it to go. Is there anybody watching me right now on this Therapy Tuesday pop-up where you have followed the word? You did exactly what you believe you were supposed to do. You forgave them. You were faithful. You did what you were supposed to do. And now it's not succeeding. It's not working the way that you thought it would work. In fact, not only is it not working the way I thought it would work, this thing has gotten worse. If that's anybody on this Therapy Tuesday pop-up, just drop a fire in the comments right there. God, I did what you said, but it's not successful. And we began to cover that in prayer yesterday because sometimes you can begin to question what God said based on whether or not it succeeds the way you think it's supposed to succeed. But the truth is God had already told Moses, I'm about to get the glory over Pharaoh. I'm going to get the glory over the Egyptians, which means Moses, there's a plan working that's much bigger than you. And I know it doesn't look like you're succeeding. And I know you're disappointed. Listen to how disappointed he is. He protests to the Lord. You know your disappointment when you go disappointed when you protest to the Lord. You're like, God, now you're not disrespectful. We don't get disrespectful with the Lord. But he's like, why have you brought all this trouble on your own people? Listen, why did you send me? Why did you send me? In other words, Moses is like, God, why am I even out here? Why am I even doing this? And sometimes when you go through disappointment, and let's define disappointment because you got to heal from that today. What's disappointment? It's sadness or displeasure because it's not what you hoped or expected. It's sadness or displeasure because it's not what you hoped or expected. And pay attention, Moses is clearly disappointed. But Moses, watch me, we can experience disappointment, but what we can't do is stay there. Type that in the comments, I can't stay there. Let me get you to, let me get you to share on every platform. When you share, people get saved. We're 12 away from 900 decisions. You can't stay there. You can't stay there. I know maybe you didn't get the refund. You thought you'd go get on your taxes. You may be disappointed. You can't stay there. I know maybe you didn't hit your first quarter goals for your business and you're disappointed, but you can't stay there. I know that relationship didn't go the way you thought it was going to go, but you can't stay there. I know things didn't happen the way that you planned on them to happen, but you can't stay there because disappointment is a place. And as long as you're occupying disappointment, watch me, you cannot reach for destiny. As long as you're occupying disappointment, you cannot reach for what's ahead of you. As long as you're occupying disappointment, you can never get out of it because you can't decide to stay in disappointment and to move forward at the same time. Both of those things can't be true at the same time. Both of those things can't be true at the same time. That's why the Apostle Paul said, this one thing I know how to do, drop a one in the comments, I forget those things that are behind me. I forget the disappointments and I reach or I press for the prize that's ahead of me. Which means this disappointment is proof that God ain't going to do it this way. I'm going to back it up and say it again. This disappointment is just proof that God's not going to do it this way. This disappointment is just my proof that God's not going to do it this way. He's going to do it another way because he's the God that makes ways out of no way. He's the God that makes ways out of no way. And if he's making ways out of no way, then this means that this ain't the way. There's another way. Put that in the comments. There's another way. There's another way. But listen to Moses' disappointment. Listen, listen how I have to feel. Now, if you weren't on prayer last night, you should go back and watch it. It'll replay tonight at 5 p.m. Mountain. And you can go back and watch it on demand or listen to the podcast. But Moses spent his first 40 years in Egypt at, uh, in succession to be the next Pharaoh. 
Then he, he, he unalives a man. Got to say it like that on social media. He unalives a man. And when he unalives a man, he's on the run from Pharaoh. And he spends the next 40 years on the backside of the desert in a wilderness, tending to his, listen, tending to his father-in-law's sheep. Now, there's wisdom there because, Moses, I need you to learn how to take care of somebody else's. Because I'm about to give you two million of my people. And when I give you two million of my people, they're my people, not your people. So I need you to handle them right. So you're going to learn how to take care of somebody else's sheep. Because watch me. What if your assignment isn't to own, but it's to manage? That's a whole, that's a whole word right there. What if your assignment isn't that you're going to be the one that necessarily owns the thing, but you're going to manage the thing? What if your assignment is that you're not going to be the number one, you're going to be the number two? What if your assignment is very different than what you've imagined it to be? He said, Moses, these are going to be my people. So you're going to have to learn how to manage your, watch me, your father-in-law's sheep. So for the next 40 years, you're going to feel, watch me, you're going to feel like you're not much because you're managing somebody else's. But the reality is, is that's part of your assignment. I pray God would clearly reveal your assignment to you because sometimes you've let American culture and American society or the culture around you or social media make you think you're missing something or you're not fulfilled or you're not doing what you're called or created to do because your assignment is not like everybody else's. Moses, you're my prophet. Moses, you're my spokesman. Moses, you're the man of God. Moses, you, you, you're going to do you're going to be the deliverer, but you're not going to own these people. Matter of fact, Moses, you're not going to own a piece of land. Matter of fact, Moses, you're not Moses, you're not going to own a home. Matter of fact, Moses, your life is not going to fall into the categories everybody else has done. If I'm speaking to you, drop a fire in the comments. See, I need God to make you clear about what you're supposed to do. Isaiah 48 to 17 says, he's the Lord that makes us profit. He leads us the way we should go, which means your assignment may not be like somebody else's. Do you not know in the Bible, those that were called to the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, that they didn't get an uh, they didn't get the same inheritance that everybody else got. They got the tithe was part of their inheritance, but they didn't get the same uh, allotment of land that everybody else got. In other words, your assignment, watch me, your assignment literally comes with different parameters. And I pray that God reveal it to you, watch me, and then make you okay with that. For some of you, your life is not going to be like everybody else's. The apostle Paul, he had the gift to be single. It's a spiritual gift that he said he had. He calls it a spiritual gift. And for some of you all, watch me. Everybody's trying to tell you, you need this, you need this, you need this. And for somebody listening, you're like, hey, listen, I'm good. Because maybe your assignment isn't the typical picturesque American family. Maybe that's not your assignment. I need God to reveal it to you and then to make you okay with it. There's some of you, here's the healing you need. Here's the healing you need. You need to be healed from wanting somebody else's life. Oh my God, I'm teaching 18 minutes into this thing. God, heal us from wanting somebody else's life. Heal us from wanting somebody else's assignment. Heal us from thinking that what you've done for somebody else you're supposed to do for us. You're not going to duplicate. You, what you do with us is going to be original. What you do with us is going to be made on what you sent us to the earth to do. Jeremiah 1, 5, before I sent you to the earth, I, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you a, and sanctified you a prophet. I set you apart, Jeremiah. Your life is not going to be like everybody else's. So you're always going to feel less than mad, frustrated, unaccomplished if you're trying to live somebody else's life. Oh, my God. For some of you, watch me, what's got you frustrated is you looking at somebody else's life. But he sent you to do what he sent you to do. And what he sent you to do is not what he sent me to do. So the best thing you can do is say, God, what am I supposed to do? And then let me do that thing like can't nobody else do it. Can't nobody do what I do when I do when I do how I do when I do when I do it. Because when I do it, I do it well because that's what I was sent to do. If this is speaking life into your life right now, drop a fire in the comments. Let me get you on every platform. Like this video. Tell me where you're watching from and share. When you share, people get saved. All right. Here we go. Let's go. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So next thing. Listen, Moses' assignment was very different. His name, they, they named him Moses, which in the Hebrew is Moshe. M-O-S-H-E. Moshe. Because they drew him out of the Nile River. 
Now, I want you to think about Moses' life because let's deal with some of this disappointment, okay? All right, let's deal with some of this disappointment. Moses, your mother sends you down the Nile River. She gives you up. You're the one that is, look at me, air quotes, abandoned. You're the one that's left alone. She keeps Aaron and Miriam, your older brother and sister. She keeps them. She sends you down the, the Nile. She sends you down the Nile because she thinks that by sending you down the Nile, it's going to give you a better chance. Oh, my God. Which means, Moses, part of your disappointment is fueled because in the background, there is this tape playing. Yeah, tape. You remember tapes? There's a tape playing of why did she send me away? Why did I get to grow up in the house? Why did I get to be around them? Why, why didn't I? And the Bible says in Hebrews that his mother, Yoshebel, she gave him up, look at me, by faith. Which means she didn't know why she sent him down the Nile, but she sent him down the Nile. You better run. You better run. She doesn't know why she, she ended up doing what she did. Why did she keep the two and give up the one? See, for some of you, you've struggled your whole life with issues from your childhood. And I pray that today and that this month and this year represent healing from your childhood scars. Because just because it's over doesn't mean you're over it. The Bible says she did it by faith. She didn't know why. And can I help some of you all? The reason you need to forgive your mama, forgive your daddy, forgive your uncle. I hear the Lord loud and clear. There was an uncle that touched you. You were four. You've not forgiven him. I hear the Lord loud and clear. Y'all, the Holy Ghost is speaking loud. I need you to hear me. It is because certain things happen and, and we don't understand why, but we have to believe he makes all things work together for our good. He does. And he's ordering steps to get us to certain places that don't make any sense to us now. But watch me, Moses, if you stay in the house, listen, and if you grow up with your brothers and sisters, you are going to, or with your brother and sister, you're going to grow up as a slave instead of a prince. Which means when I send you back at age 80, listen to me, when I send you back at age 80, when you try to go in there to the court of the king, He's going to say, who the heck are you? We don't know you. Y'all missed your shout. If you got the revelation, drop a fire in the comments. I'm going to say it again because some of y'all missed your shout. You missed your place to give God praise. So I'm going to run it by you again. Moses, if I don't have you sent down the Nile River as a little boy, yes, you're going to have rejection. Yes, you're going to have abandonment. Yes, you're going to feel like, why would my mama do me like this? Yes, you're going to feel like, why didn't my father try to stop her? Yes, you're going to feel all of that. But Moses, if I don't send you down the Nile River, when it's time for you to go back to Pharaoh and tell them to let my people go, you're not even going to get access to the court because they don't know who you are, which means I sent you ahead so they know you. So when you showed up, you'd have access. I'm going to tell somebody, I heard you, Lord, that your abandonment is what's about to give you access. Who dropped you? is why God's about to make somebody much more powerful pick you up. Who rejected you was really God's divine redirection. Moses, if I don't send you, then you're gonna grow up like a slave. Look at me, which means your mindset is gonna be like theirs. You're gonna think like a slave. You're gonna act like a slave. I want some of you to hear me. What you have called rejection from a childhood and abandonment from a childhood, it was really one of the best things that could have ever happened to you. And I believe that whatever has hurt you deepest on this Therapy Tuesday, I want to speak it into your life that it's going to help you greatest. If you receive that, say, I receive it. 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 You had to be abandoned. You had to be rejected. You had to be. Because if you're not, you're going to think like them. And guess what, Moses? I can't use you to help what you think like. You can't be the answer if you got the same problem. Let me back that thing up. Moses, you can't be the answer to the people if you have the same problem as the people. This is why for many of you, God never lets you get caught up with some family stuff. He never lets you get caught up with a bunch of stuff with your friends. For some of you, this is why often you've been around people, but you've often felt 
like you're alone. You've often felt like you were isolated. You often felt like you could be in a room, the life of the party, but it's just you. Wave at me if I'm talking to you. Please do not solicit in my comments, all right? Um, we have resources on our app and our website. You do that again, I have to block you. Please don't do that, all right? All right? You can't be the answer if you have the same problem. God kept you out of some stuff. He kept you out of some stuff. Because Miriam and Aaron would have tried to make you feel like you were less than because you're their younger brother, but you are going to be their leader. So I don't even need them to grow up with you. I don't even need them to grow up with you because if they grow up with you, watch me, they already disrespected you one time questioning who you married. So I don't need them. I don't need them getting beside themselves thinking they can come at you any kind of way. Who am I helping on this Therapy Tuesday pop up on this Tuesday afternoon? I'm almost done because we've been on here for 25 minutes. So Moses has the disappointment of childhood. Then when he finally gets um, back to Egypt, and so at age 40, he's on the run. For 40 years, he's raising somebody else's sheep on the backside of the desert in the wilderness. God comes and visits him through a burning bush. That burning bush, I taught you this in prayer last night, gives him his assignment to go into Egypt. When he goes into Egypt, listen carefully, when he goes into Egypt, we're reading this first encounter in Exodus 5. Here's what he says, because Pharaoh gets mad at him and says, I don't know your God and y'all are not going to start. Uh, 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 y'all are not going to stop making these bricks. Matter of fact, you're going to make it with no straw. And then now all of a sudden things got worse because now the Bible says that the taskmasters, they started whipping the Israelite foreman. So the way it worked is you had the workers and then you had the foremen who were of the workers. And then you had the taskmasters who were over them who were Egyptian. So they began to beat the leader. When they beat the leader, the leader would then in turn beat the people. So then the ones that they'd hate would end up being their own because their own affliction came from their own people. You got it? If you got it, say I'm with you, Bishop. I'm going fast because I got to give you a lot of revelation today. So listen, now what happens? Moses says this because it gets worse. In Exodus 6 and uh, 23, ever since I came to Pharaoh as your spokesman, he has been even more brutal to your people. Look at this. And you have done nothing to rescue them. Is there anybody? Come on, Ray. Is there anybody on this Therapy Tuesday pop-up where there are some areas of your life you can look at it and you're like, God, this has gotten worse. And in fact, Lord, if I'm honest with you, I don't indict you. I'm not trying to check you, God. But in fact, it looks like you're doing nothing. Can we have a real moment? Guys, you'll never heal if you're never real. You'll never heal if you're never real. Can you wave at me if that's you? God, it looks like this area has gotten worse. And in fact, it looks like you're doing nothing. Oh, my God. But looks can be deceiving. Just because it doesn't look like he's working, it does not mean he's not working. Just because it doesn't look like something is happening, doesn't mean something is not happening and working in your favor. I need you to hear me and hear me clearly. Because God was working. He was working behind the scenes. But what are you left with? Disappointment. That's what we're left with, disappointment. Sadness, again, let me give you this definition. Disappointment, sadness, or displeasure because it's not what you hoped or expected. So Moses is like, God, ever since I started doing what you said, it's worse. And it doesn't look like you're helping. It's worse. And it doesn't look like you're helping. It's worse. And it doesn't look like you're helping. It's worse. And it doesn't look like you're helping. It's worse. And it doesn't look like you're helping. Like you're like you're helping. You ready for this? You ready for this? If you're still with me, drop a fire in the comments. If you're still with me, drop a fire in the comments. All right? So listen, 10 times, there are 10 plagues that end up hitting Egypt. 10 times, drop a 10. 10 times, 10 times, Moses goes back to Pharaoh. Same response. It's almost like for women that have been pregnant, it's almost like contractions. It's like contractions, but you never birthed anything. It's like, get ready to happen, get ready to happen. Nope. This is it. This is it. Nope. I'm expecting good news, good news. Nope. Finally, uh, nope. Is there anybody watching me where there's some areas of your life where it feels like contractions? 
Like, ooh, -wee, this is good news. Okay, I'm excited. Like every time, every time it looks like something's about to break through, that thing breaks down. Every time it looks like something great is about to manifest, it you just end up mad. You and I have to learn how to quickly heal from disappointment. We have to learn how to quickly heal from disappointment. God takes Moses through 10. And 10 is the biblical number of divine perfection, which means God says, I'm going to let you be disappointed until you're divinely perfected. Talk, y'all. See, it only needed to be 10. Come on, pull your car. We'll be safe because I need, I'm need. i almost done. But listen, it only was 10 because that's how long it took for Moses to get it. For some, you might be at 20 nose. You might be at 30. You might be at 40. You might be at one. You might be at two. But you have to quickly heal from disappointment because here's what the enemy wants you to do. You get bad news. Now you're disappointed. So now you're not focused. Now you're not working. Now you're not creative. Now you've got an attitude. Let's be real. Now you're overeating. Now you're under eating. Come on, y'all, wait with me. What do you do? Talk to me in the comments. What do you do when you get disappointed? And be real. For those of you that are about to say prayer, great. Don't put that because we got that. For those of you that say worship, great. But don't put that. All right, hi. Come on, let's go. Let's go. What, what do you do when you get disappointed? Eat. Eat, shut down. Eat, sleep. Come on. Come on. Shut down mentally. I got you. Distracted, angry, feel depressed, isolated, depression, cry, right, sex. Come on, tell the truth. Sometimes I cry, cry. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Withdraw, ice cream, my God. Sit in silence, but you got to find that pint of ice cream is only 300 calories. All right, commercial break, okay. Drink, run away from the problem, get mad or withdraw, shut down. All right, bad attitude, high, get angry, get frustrated, get quiet. Get mad. Guess what y'all? Stop praying. If I look at me, here's the focus of this Therapy Tuesday. Disappointment is part of the plan. It's part of your process. So if we don't learn how to heal from it quickly, we will keep slowing down our own process. And I need everybody to hear me. I need everybody to hear me. Oh, yes, I found a pint. You got a whole pint, 300 cows. Look at me. If you don't learn how to heal quickly and move on. Look at me. You will be the source of your own delay. But I need you to put this in the comments. No more delay from me. Make it, make it practical for you. Make it personal for you. No more delay for me. If you don't learn how to quickly heal, come on, somebody says shop. If you don't learn how to quickly heal from disappointment, you will be the reason for your own delay. See, a lot of people right now are sitting back saying, God, what's up with this? God, what's up with that? Can I be honest? Sometimes the delay is you. It's us. Because you're still sitting in disappointment. Imagine if Moses stayed there and sat there. Imagine if that happens. Imagine if that happens. Imagine if that happens. Guess what? That's Exodus 5. When you get to Exodus 6, pay close attention. He says, um, let's get down. Uh, uh, verse nine. So the Lord basically tells them, go back, do it again. So the Moses told the people what the Lord said, but they refused to listen to him anymore. They had become too discouraged with the brutality of their slavery. Then the Lord said to Moses, go back to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, tell him to let the people of Israel go. Verse 12, but Moses objected. My own people won't even listen to me anymore. How can I expect Pharaoh to listen to me? I'm such a clumsy speaker anyhow. So what happens when you get disappointed? We can see that not only is Moses disappointed, but we see something else that happens. Now the enemy begins to lie to him. Now the enemy begins to use his insecurities against him. Because what disappointment will do, disappointment. Now you begin to diss yourself. And for some of you, this is where you're at right now. You're beginning to diss you. You're dissing your own, your own appointment. You're dissing your own appointment. If you got the revelation of how I broke that word down, drop a fire in the comments. I'm almost done. You're dissing your own appointment. Because Moses said, my own people won't listen. And I covered this in prayer. Now they mad at me. Pharaoh hate don't know me now. My own people hate on me now. And now I'm hating on myself. 
Because now I'm thinking, you know what? I'm not really, I, you know what? I don't really need to. I rebuke every negative thing you've spoken about yourself. Don't let disappointment mess with your display. Don't let it mess with how you see yourself. One disappointment is not the end for you. One disappointment is not over for you. One deal that didn't work, it's not the end for you. There'll be other deals. One relationship that didn't work, that's not the end for you. There'll be other relationships. One car that they repo, that's not the only car. Guess what? Prices are coming down. You're about to go get you a deal. Guess what? Just because you didn't get that house, guess what? Prices are coming down. You're going to get a better deal on the house. Thank God you didn't buy it when you wanted it because you would have paid too much for it. One disappointment is not the end for you. I used to put this in the comments. It's never over for me. It's never over for me. The Bible even says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So even when you, even death ain't the end for us. Even death isn't the end for us. Even death isn't the end for us. You better hear me. Tesla just laid off 10% of their workforce. Why? To cut costs. They're reducing prices. They're chopping prices. That's not just them. Look at the market. Everything. It, prices are coming down. Which means you better thank God you didn't get what you wanted when you wanted it because you would have paid too much for it. Are you hearing me? It's never over for you. But here's what I just used Tesla because I was seeing the story. All right, look, look at me. Look, nothing against or for Tesla. All right. Listen, it, it just was making a point. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Um, disappointment will try to make you diss your own appointment, make you diss yourself. Disappointment will mess with your display how you see things and how you see yourself. Because Moses, while you're looking at the fact that Pharaoh's hating on you, the people are hating on you and you're hating on yourself, here's what you're missing. You still have access to Pharaoh. He didn't say you can't come back. I need you to put this in the comments. I still have access. I still have access. I still have access. This is some car folks on here talking about those. I still have access. I still still have access, which means this is not over. It's not done. But disappointment will have you dissing yourself. You'll diss your appointment, and it's going to mess with your display, which is why you have to heal properly. So this goes on. Ten, ten versions of this, same, of this same type of scenario happens. But I want you to pay attention to what Moses did. He didn't stop. And for some of you, here's your therapy. Here's your healing. You can't stop. You can't be stagnant. I need you to do something, which is why I came to you early today, at the middle of the day. You have to do something in the direction that you prayed for. You have to do something in the direction that you're moving toward. You have to do something. You have to do something. You have to do something. You can't stop or be stagnant. Moses got right back up. And imagine how he feels. And guys, he's a man with a family. And he's this leader. He's thrust into this leadership role. Just imagine how he feels. Like I'm going to another man begging this mark. I'm begging this man to let my people go. I'm begging. I didn't even but Lord, these your people. I'm begging. But guess what? Here's the, here's the next thing you got to do. How do you heal from disappointment? It's pride. You got to drop your pride. I'm going to use all these. It'll mess with your display. It'll make you diss your own appointment. It'll make you diss yourself. But you got to drop your pride. Put that in the comments. Drop my pride. Because what will fuel your disappointment is to be honest, a lot of people like feeling like a victim because it, because, because it, it fuels your pride. It fuels what you want to believe anyhow, that nothing works for you, things are against you. You got to drop your pride. Moses, you can go right back in there and try again. In front of these same people? Yep. 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 Do you want to know there's a group of people? They say that Jehovah's Witnesses and um, LDS, uh, Mormons, they say those people do really well in business. All right? I've seen a few different studies that have said that. Um, and here's why. They are used to disappointment. Oh, my God. They're used to, Jehovah's Witness, they'll knock at your door, get away from here, go. They get cussed out all the time. Get away, go. I don't want your, your kingdom hall. I don't want your pamphlet. I don't want your information. Mormons, they'll ride their bikes. They do all of that. They go, they knock on the door, all of that. No, no, get away, go away, go away, go away. They're used to disappointment. Watch me. 
which means you can't scare me with disappointment anymore. See, some of y'all, you want to know why, why, why disappointment you haven't healed from it? You want to know why you're stuck? It's because you're still scared of it. But I need you to put this, I mean, come on, let's go hood for a second. I ain't never scared. I ain't never scared. That's a who it's saying. It just means I don't scare easily. They do well in business because you can't scare them with disappointment. You can't. They're used to being told no. So you know what they do? They get up and keep it moving. They're used to being cussed out, talk crazy to all of that. Listen, that's your issue with me. I don't have to fight you because I'm here to deliver a message. I'm not the message. I'm here to deliver a message. I'm not the message. So for some of you, listen carefully. You're going to have to drop your pride. But I don't want them to tell me no again. What? Who cares? Well, I don't I don't want to get out there and date again. You you so you're gonna stay in dysfunction because you're scared to date? You're gonna stay in something crazy because you're scared to date? Well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna I, what's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? Moses had to get up, get dressed, go in front of a man. That had just told him no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times. And not look at me, guys. Not just this man, but this whole man, right? This man's entourage. Which means, can you this just be real, y'all? Y'all know how people do. People, people, people have been people in since forever. Do you, imagine how he feels. I'm done. Imagine how he feels. When these guys are back there laughing, he's in here again. He applied again. He's trying again. He's doing this again. He's starting another business. She's getting back in the gym. He's getting back on his fitness so he can get his body out of here. He's they going to try again. They're going to get up again, again. So just imagine what it is. I can get past Pharaoh, but the little sneakers and the smirks of the people standing around him that are laughing. But watch me. But God's going to make sure you get the last laugh. Put this in the comments. I'll get the last laugh. I'll get the last laugh. I'll get the last laugh. See, pride would have made Moses say, I'm not going to do this, God. They ain't going to be laughing at me. You'll get the last laugh. God, I'm not going to I'm not going to step out here on faith because what if it doesn't work? Guess what? I'll get the last laugh. Well, these people are talking about me. Guess what? I'll get the last laugh. I'll get the last laugh. Because the Bible says, and I'm done, that on that 10th time, here we are, in that 10th time, in Exodus chapter 12, the Bible says that when that death angel came through and slew the firstborn sons of Egypt and slew the firstborn of their cattle too, that's how you knew it was supernatural. It wasn't just some disease in the water. It wasn't just some natural thing. God says, well, make sure you know this is me because there'll be no explanation for this. Watch me. The Bible says that night, Pharaoh said, get out, he ordered. Leave my people. Take the rest of the Israelites. You go and worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds, as you said, and be gone. Watch what he says. But bless me as you leave. The Egyptians left with silver gold clothing they stripped the egyptians of their wealth Six hundred thousand men plus women children etc the total number guys drop this in the comments two million put two in an all caps m two in an all caps m two m that's how you say two million two million 70 people went in to egypt of the hebrews two million came out in other words, what did God do? God multiplied them and he gave them more, even in the midst of their process. And I want you to hear me. It's the same thing he's doing for you, but you have to get over this disappointment. 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 Over this disappointment. Last scripture, Hebrews 10, 36. You need to persevere. So that when you have done the will of the Lord, you will receive what's promised. Which means this process isn't over until I get what's promised. But disappointment is part of the process. And I can't let it make me diss myself. I can't let it make me diss my appointment. I can't let it mess with my display. And I have to drop my pride. Four Ds. This ain't 3D tonight, but this afternoon, this is 4D. 
Well, they're going to say you're crazy. They're crazy. Well, you're going to aggravate them. You know what I've learned? I don't care who the heck is Tuesday. We'll wait till a fifth Sunday. I don't care who the heck I aggravate. Come on. I need you to get this spirit about you. I don't get. Well, so-and-so don't like you. They probably don't like themselves. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't care. Can you put this in the comments? I do not care. I do not care. Oh, y'all know the people's business keeps it real. I just, I'll wait till fifth Sunday. I don't care. I don't care. Well, you know, they think this. That's what they think. Listen, never consider the opinions of people who don't live lives you would want to live. Let me back the thing up. Listen, uh, people, so-and-so thinks this, so-and-so thinks this. If I took their advice, I'd live their lives, and I don't want that life. I like mine. I don't want that life. I do not care. No, you got to say it like that. I do not care. It doesn't mean you don't listen to wisdom. Sure, you listen to wisdom. It doesn't mean you don't listen to counsel. Sure, you listen to counsel. It doesn't even mean that you don't hear what your enemies say. Jesus said, "What do people? who do people say? I don't know what the word on the street is about me. But at the end of the day, okay, okay. Well, you know, you don't want to get on nobody's nerves. Listen, if I'm on my way to my promise, baby, you get in my way, woe unto you. Woe unto you. You can't be like that man by the pool for 38 years where every time I'm trying, somebody gets in front of me. You better get the Bible says the kingdom suffers violence and violent men and women take it by force. You know what that man in John 5 should have did? The next time somebody was walking in front of him, he should look, put your hand down. No, nah, baby, I've been waiting too long. Mm -mm, mm -mm, it's my turn. It's my turn. It's my time. You, you, we get you next time. But I, watch me. I am not going to let pride make me miss my promise. Put that in the comments. Pride won't make me miss my promise. I know that's a long statement, but that's that's why many people stay stuck in disappointment. It's because of pride. Pride. What do they think? What about this? What about this? What, and the Bible says pride goes before a fall. Pride goes before a fall. Don't let pride make you miss your promise. Some of you, you, your promise is on the other side of an apology, but pride won't let you apologize. If you don't call them and say, hey, I need to apologize. Somebody called me a couple of weeks ago. And I'm going to be, can I be honest? Can, all right, let's go, y'all. I'm done. Can, can you just put this in the comments? Say, keep it 100. I, let me just give you this, and we're done. We've been on for 47 minutes. This was good. Let me just keep it 100. If I can keep it 100, say, keep it 100. Somebody called me a few weeks ago. And, uh, okay, I, I, got, I got at least one. Christian said, okay, I got at least two. All right, I know y'all type it. So these TikTok comments come up fast. Guys, let's run these likes up on um, these hearts up on TikTok. We're 14,000. Let's run them up. Would you do that? So somebody called me a few weeks ago who um, um, used to uh, have very close proximity to me. And I'm going to be honest. When I saw their name come up on my phone, I looked at the phone like, huh, what is this? Who do, what do they want? So my phone stays on do not disturb because of the volume of messages. So, uh, I, you know, I have to see it. So I look at it and I'm like, mm, mm, whatever. Mm. So then I call back and I'm, or, and I'm like, who is this? <laughs> I was being petty. <laughs> who is this? <laughs> they said, sir, you don't know who I am? I said, mm, what can I do for you? <laughs> Sir, I'm just calling. I'm just calling to apologize. Because, and they listed all these different things. And they said, and everything you said was right. And everything you said was right. Now, here's me. Here's me. Some of y'all wouldn't say nothing. I say something. I was like, well, I told you that. Everything you said was right. Da, 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 da. And then I said, listen, thank you for your apology. And then I began to share. I said, listen. I said, I was disappointed with how you handled that. Disappointed, da, 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 da. I said, but thank you for your apology. I, here's what I said. I said, because most people don't apologize, which is why they stay stuck. Most people never apologize, and their pride is their downfall. Their pride is their downfall. Some of you, here's, you're, dis, you're disappointed with the person, and you just need to call and say, listen, I, I forgive you. I didn't ask you for, for no forgiveness. Yep, but I got to let this go. Father, whatever, how many of you know there's some pride that's, in, that's that's been in the way? Wave at me. 
there's some pride that's been in the way. Listen, I'm just, all right, listen. No, then they started quoting. They said, sir, this is what they said. They said, sir, the person I am, you, this is their words. They said, you made me into this person. They said, I am like the duplication of you now. I said, well, thank you for at least saying thank you. Because most people just act like they came to me like that. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't let pride get in your way. Father, lock this thing in us today so that we would quickly heal from disappointment. We will not diss our appointment. We won't miss our moment. We will not diss ourselves. We will not let disappointment mess up our display so we don't see things properly. And we will drop our pride. And for that, God, we say thank you. Lock this in us, God, in Jesus' name. You got to get up. Disappointment's part of the process. Get up. Get over it. Can you tag somebody that you know has been disappointed and needs to hear this? Or can you send this to them now and share this with them? Because all of us need to hear this. All of us need to hear this. All of us need to hear this. Guys, I, listen, I know something about going through some disappointments. But you have to get up. You have to keep it moving. All right? Listen, if this blessed you again, let me get you to share. When you share, people get saved. Don't forget, the spring feasts begin. We're fasting Sunday night, 6 p.m. local to Monday, 6 p.m. local time, whatever your local time is, 6 p.m. We're fasting. It's a water-only fast. Consult your physician for medical advice if you need that, all right? Um, and we're fasting to welcome the first of the spring feast, which is Passover. After Moses dealt with disappointment, overnight, 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 on that 10th one, when God was like, you got it now. You got it. You got it. Okay? So Passover begins Monday. We're doing what's called Erev uh, Passover, the eve of Passover. We're fasting water only to welcome the Passover. And I'll tell you more about that as the week goes by. Don't forget, our pop-up is tomorrow for Wednesday. And then we've got Wednesday Night Live Bible Study tomorrow night. And we're going to talk about how do you honor the biblical feast. So I'll teach more about the biblical feast tomorrow night. And then Sunday, oh, my God, last night after prayer. The Lord spoke clearly about the direction to go on Sunday, and it's going to be powerful, okay? If this blesses you, we're going to sow into it. Sow into your own healing. Um, uh, and the seed I want to use, we're going to use, um, we're going to use this. I want us to use um, 36 as our seed today. 36 is our seed today. And all you're just going to, all you're just going to simply call this seed is this, is uh <laughs> ND, not disappointed. ND, not disappointed. Um, if you don't have 36, put 36 in what you sell. Maybe do $20.36 or $10.36 or $360 or 3600 Put a 36 in what you sell. While you're getting your seed together, guys, let me read this to you. Let me read you some people who had to move on from disappointment. Bill Gates, y'all, everybody knows Bill Gates. Bill Gates' first business, um, uh, first company, traveled out, I failed miserably. When Gates and his partner, Paul Allen, tried to sell it, the product wouldn't even work. It wouldn't even work. But he was indeed not disappointed. He kept moving. He bounced back. Jim Carrey used to be homeless. Carrey revealed that on inside the actor's studio when he was 15, he had to drop out of school to support his family and then started living in his van. His dad would drive him to comedy clubs in Toronto. But then he started, watch me, it was, it was the Wayans family on In Living Color that gave him his big break. Envy, not disappointment. Everybody knows that. Oprah Winfrey gave birth to a child at age 14, lost the child. She was molested, ran away from home. Everybody knows Oprah. Envy, not disappointed. Thomas Edison failed a thousand times before creating the light bulb. The exact amount of times has been debated. Edison simply said this, I haven't failed. I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Indeed, not disappointed. Put it in the comments. Dr. Seuss, first children's book, and the thing I saw it on Mulberry Street, was refused by 27 publishers, but not disappointed. Over, over three quarters of a billion books later. Will Smith's life, put Indy in the comments. Will Smith's life got flipped, turned upside down when he owed the IRS, Jesus, $2.8 million in taxes. If that's what he owed, here's my shot. That means he probably made around $10 million. But he bounced back. And in 96, start, uh, start in the second highest grossing film in U.S. history at the time called Independence Day. Put Indy in the comments. 
Michael Jordan was rejected from his high school varsity basketball team. Ooh, what coach feels kind of dumb later. And then six NBA championships later. Put Indy in the comments. I need you to not be disappointed. I need you to not be disappointed. I need you to not be disappointed. All right? Father, lock that in us. Okay? 36 is our seed. Indy is the name of it. Put a 36 in whatever you sow today. And this is into your own healing that you would not be disappointed. You have to move on forward quickly. I gave you those four points today. Okay? How can you sow? You can use the cash app. Dollar sign. Bishop form with the number two. You can use PayPal, Vidmo, Zelle, and Givelify. That's available. The email is hello at harvestchurch.church. Hello at harvestchurch.church. All right, whatever you do, put a 30, whatever you sow today, put a 36 in it. So if you do $100, you do 136, whatever, put a 36 in whatever you sow. We're targeting it in Hebrews 10, 36. For you need to persevere so that after you've done the will of the Lord, you can receive what's promised, all right? Last but not least, on this Tuesday afternoon, uh, if you're on and you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord, or be sure... Wherever you're at, on the count of three, you do the hand wave emoji where you say it's me. No guilt, no condemnation, no shame. Wherever you're at, God loves you. White, black, tall, short, everybody included, nobody excluded. If that's you, on the count of three, you do the hand wave emoji or say it's me. Guys, I just spent 56 minutes pouring into you. So can I get you to give me 60 seconds? Of you praying it for the people would come to the Lord, scales and fall off of eyes, scales and fall off of ears, wherever you're at. If you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord, or be sure do the hand of emoji just says to me, there's one there. It's hello at harvestchurch.church. That's that email. Can somebody put that in there and I'll pin it? Hello at harvestchurch.church. Wherever you're at, there's two. You need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord, or be sure. Do that hand of emoji or say it's me. I got you. I got you today. More importantly, God's got us. Can't be disappointed. Can't stay there. You, you, you listen. You're gonna visit. There's three because we all go through it. But you can't stay there. You can't stay there. Wherever you're at, do the hand wave emoji or say it's me. If you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord, or be sure. Wherever you're at, do that hand wave emoji or say it's me. There's four. Wherever you're at, we're waiting on you. No guilt, no condemnation, no shame. You might be watching and saying, Bishop Foreman, I think things are good. I think it ain't knowing. I need you to do that hand with emoji that says me. He said, Bishop Foreman, I made a lot of mistakes. I've had a lot of failures. I made, I've made, made a, there's five. Okay, five. I must have missed one. I've, I've made a lot of dumb decisions. Guess what? Get back up again. He might say, well, Bishop Foreman, I, I don't think God is going to love me. Somebody told me God won't love me because of this. They're lying. The devil is a lie. There is nothing that will keep you. There's six or separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Nothing. And you don't get all that right to come to God. You come to God and God helps you get that right. Fashions, are you responding? Are you responding? There's seven right there. Fashion, I need to know if you're responding or not, because I'm not sure. There's seven. I got you, Hope. Or excuse me, I say seven. There's eight. Excuse me. There's eight that have responded. Wherever you're at, do that hamburger emoji. You say it's me. If you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord or be sure. Wherever you're at, eight have responded. There's a couple more of you that need to respond, and I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to wait for you. I know this has been right in the middle of the day. Be sure responding. I got you. So that's nine. We got you. We got you. Wherever you're at, do that hand wave emoji. says me. I'm going to count down from 10. Guys, if you'll pray, scales fall off of eyes, scales fall off of ears, and that people would come to the Lord today. 10, 9, hand wave emoji. says it's me. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Two, one, nine have responded so far. You can keep responding. Everybody pray this for me. Say, Father, thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for your love for me. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are my Lord and my Savior. Give me the grace to be a faithful Christian from this day forward. If I fall or if I fail, give me the grace to get right back up again. Today is the beginning of the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, you just prayed that. Text Harvest to 55498. Can somebody put it over on TikTok so I can pin it again? Somebody put it back on IG so I can pin it again. For those of you over on the other platforms, just at the bottom of the screen, you're going to, um, there's 10 that have responded. Wherever you're at, 10 have now responded. You're going to text Harvest to 55498. Many people respond. Some of y'all don't send a text. I want to encourage you to send a text. It's just going to show you what to do next so that you can get your relationship with God on track. All right? Text Harvest to 55498, you know the option for salvation. And when you do that, we're going to shoot your message right away. And so you got to make Christianity your lifestyle, not just a hobby. Some of you are saved, but you don't have a shepherd. 
You can be a part of the Harvest Church family. You can live in Denver, Atlanta, anywhere across America, around the world, and be a part of the Harvest Church family. We'd love for you to do that. All you got to do is text Harvest to 55498. You're going to enter the option for join HC. All right. When we get off, guys, make sure you do two things. Make sure you share this. Make sure that you sow. Again, 36 is the seed. Whatever you, we do, let's put a 36 in it. All right. Um, why do I have you to sow? He gives seed to the sower. Number two, first Samuel chapter nine teaches us that whenever a word speaks life into you, you should sow into it. Let me just say this too, just for those of you that maybe are new. I never teach you to do what I don't do. I'm a sower and I make it my business to always sow at a high level um, because you, you, watch me, when you're a sower, um, you give seed to the sower, you'll never lack. You'll never lack. Faithful givers first. I pray. This bless you today. As we hop off, make sure you share. Make sure that you so. I love you. Clean hour today. It was an hour, but I think it was well spent. I love you guys. Have a great Tuesday. We play a prayer tonight at 5 o'clock now. I see you tomorrow for the pop-up. Love you. Shalom. See you, TikTok. Love y'all.